The Iraq war continues to haunt the UK with lawyers representing hundreds of detainees at that conflict now saying the British government is ultimately responsible for torture so brutal it amounts to statism. Their testimonies have been submitted to the International Criminal Court, but as RT's Polly Boyko reports, the UK is determined to stop any investigation in its tracks. Up until now, the International Criminal Court at The Hague had mostly tried African dictators and tyrants, but the ICC has been asked to investigate thousands of allegations of war crimes committed by British forces in Iraq. A 250 page dossier presented by a human rights organization and a British law firm contains allegations of beatings, of electrocutions, mock executions, and sexual assault committed by UK forces and according to the authors of this report the finger of blame extends to the very heart of the British government at the time so the head of the British Army the former defense secretary and the former defense minister could face prosecution for what this dossier calls systemic war crimes there are many hundreds of cases where the, the people who've been interviewed and have provided reports about this abuse and uh, it varies from what people might think are um, relatively mundane examples of abuse to really quite appalling physical violence. The report says that British military commanders knew that their forces were committing war crimes and moreover that their civilian superiors consciously ignored such information at their disposal. But the UK's Foreign Secretary William Hague has already firmly rejected the suggestion that those at the top here in Westminster knew what was taking place on the ground in Iraq. We reject allegations of systematic abuse, but where there are substantiated allegations of things going wrong, these things have been or are being investigated. Uh, that does not require references to the International Criminal Court. The position of the British government has constantly been, oh, we're doing enough. The point of this is simply that they still haven't done enough. There are right now uh, at the International Criminal Court two heads of state, one of them the sitting head of state of Kenya, and the other, the former head of state of Côte d'Ivoire, they're both on trial at the International Criminal Court, not for getting their hands bloody, they didn't do anything themselves, but people under their authority or people they should have controlled were committing the crimes. So if it's good enough for the African countries, it should be good enough for the UK too. The International Criminal Court has come under increasing pressure to act against war crimes committed by Western countries. It's now up to the prosecutor at the ICC to go through the claims of abuse and to decide whether to call high-ranking British officials into the dock at The Hague. Polly Boyko, RT, London. Extracts from the dossier have been made public, but most of the documents are being kept under wraps. Still, the witness accounts that have come to light so far are alarming. Now, among the abuses reported are beatings, electrocutions, various kinds of sexual humiliation, and even outright rape. Family members of inmates were allegedly threatened by British troops and, in at least one case, actually harmed, such as one man who described how, after being beaten, his eight-year-old son was brought in and also attacked uh, by an officer. Another witness alleged that during an interrogation, soldiers threatened to rape his sister and arrest his elderly parents. Let's hear now from Andreas Schuler, legal advisor at the European Center for Constitutional, Constitutional and Human Rights. Mr. Schuler, your organization helped compile this report. Just how damning is it? Um, it's very damning, and the difference is that um, the Evidence shows that it's not only about individual and single cases and incidents, it's really a systematic pattern of repetitive acts uh, which occurred and that's uh, finding uh, in our report or communication to the ICC, um, it's more than single isolated incidents. Well, the UK says it's already investigating all the accusations and the submission to the ICC is needless. Why then was it filed? The UK is investigating some single incidents, they have some public inquiries, but they all don't look uh, into the systematic pattern of abuses, which also mounts to um, higher levels of, uh, within the command chain. Uh, and that's the difference, which is not under investigation in the UK so far. 
and uh, after 10 years since the first incidents happened, now it's the time for the ICC to take um, these high level cases up. Well, let's talk about the evidence. Now, the report alleges, as you say, systematic abuse that top brass were aware of or should have been aware of. Now, how sure are you of this? Well, already in 2004, there were reports by the International Committee of the Red Cross by Amnesty International um, about um, abuses and mistreatment of detainees in Iraq by British forces. Already in 2006, the um, prosecutor of the International Criminal Court found that there are some incidents um, which amount to war crimes, and even after two, until 2008, it continued. So this shows that there were already quite early allegations which haven't been uh, followed up by the UK officials to prevent um, um, future or, or um, uh, future torture between 2006 and 2008, for example. So there was public knowledge since 2000. 2006. Okay, there have been a number of attempts to bring the UK uh, military to account for its actions in Iraq. None have worked. What makes you think this will fare any different? Well, we documented many more cases than were submitted before to the International Criminal Court or to other courts. Um, it's now the time because the UK had 10 years to investigate, to prosecute. Um, the direct perpetrators, but also the higher ups um, in in the UK, um, ten years, and there are still um, hardly any prosecutions in the country. So now it's simply the time um, that uh, international courts um, have to step in. Well, there are also you know political considerations here, regardless of guilt. Do you believe the UK would actually allow its top officials to be prosecuted? Well, the UK ratified the Rome Statute and they are under the same obligations as any other states um, and that also includes to cooperate with the court and they still have the chance to prosecute the people themselves in the country but if they don't do so um, they have to cooperate um, with the International Criminal Court. The ICC has a reputation for going after Africans. Would it dare go against a European power such as Britain? It's the time now also for the ICC after also 10 years in its uh, existence to um, broaden the focus um, not only on Africa but also or on the UK but also on states like Colombia um, where crimes have been committed and where similar situations occurred like in the African states and uh, the ICC with the new prosecutor since last year is also now under obligation to look into other regions of the world and conflicts where um, serious crimes um, have been committed. Okay, well, let's talk about the court's authority. How much of, of it does it actually have without ratification from key powers, including the United States, Russia, and China? Um, the court has more than 120 member states by now, and that means already on the territory of 120 states crimes can be investigated and prosecuted by the courts. So even if the, the big states you just mentioned um, commit crimes in, in other states which have um, ratified the Rome Statute, um, they would also come under investigations. And that shows that um, if, if more and more states sign and ratify the statute, uh, more and more um, also the, the big powers um, are under pressure to, to react to um, the jurisdictions the court uh, might have if they um, commit crimes um, abroad in other countries. But of course, um, we still hope that also the statute will be um, ratified by actually all UN member states, um, including the US, Russia, um, and India, Brazil, um, and, and many more. Okay, Andreas Schuler, legal advisor to the European Center for Constitutional and Human Rights. Thank you very much for joining us.